The press on Little Mermaid was just spectacular, and the box office well, was even better than Oliver and Company. And there were loads of toys, books, puzzles, and lunch boxes that just flew off the shelves. Animation had a big hit on its hands. If you know your Disney history, then you're probably familiar with the stories of how the studio risked everything on this one movie, and the result was so successful that it sparked a new era for their animated features where they become beloved again. In fact, this is a story that happened multiple times before with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Cinderella, and The Little Mermaid. Now, many are already familiar with the significant impact that they've made for their time. But what about this new era that Disney had recently? After their renaissance, they went through a complete slump, but then suddenly came back on top again with a new batch of highly successful and acclaimed movies. Some would even go on to become the biggest animated films of all time, like the Frozen films. To this day, many have debated about what movie was responsible for igniting this revival era. Some say that it's The Princess and the Frog in 2009. Others claim to be Tangled in 2010. And there are even a few that say that it was before with Bolt back in 2008. But after doing my own research on Disney animation, I discovered another answer. One that was not only responsible for being the cause of Disney Animation's revival, but it even saved the entirety of the Walt Disney Company and helped it grow to become the entertainment giant that it is today. And that movie is none other than Chicken Little. Yes, you heard it right. That Chicken Little. I know, I know, you're probably thinking that this is the dumbest Disney statement you've ever heard. I mean, we are talking about one of the most hated and often considered to be one of the worst animated films Disney has ever made. Even I think this movie is terrible. So why would I make a claim like that towards a film like Chicken Little? You see, it's not about the movie itself. It's about what happened because of the movie. This is the story of how an unlikely animated film is the link to all the necessary changes Disney needed to make in order to pick themselves up and start not just a new chapter of Disney animation, but also the rise of the Disney empire as we know it. So, how did Chicken Little save Disney? Well, let's find out. Now let's go back to the start of the 2000s decade. It was a period when animation was going through a massive transition to the third dimension with computer graphics, which was starting to become mainstream in features. Pixar was the first to try it out as a movie making medium a few years prior and found great success with films like Toy Story and A Bug's Life. But it wasn't too long until competition started to emerge with their own CG animated features to get their moment of glory while reaping the rewards at the box office, like DreamWorks with their films like Shrek, and Blue Sky Studios with their pictures like Ice Age. Meanwhile, 2D animation was still prominent during the rise of CG, but as the public was more fascinated with the new technology, hand-drawn was starting to be viewed as old-fashioned, especially Disney's. During the decade prior, they were the dominant animation studio where every film they released was like a major motion picture event that people could not miss. Especially when some of their best movies were released during that time, like Beauty and the Beast, Aladdin, and The Lion King. It was not only a period that fans referred to as Disney's renaissance for having their movies be highly beloved and successful for the first time since the days of Walt, but it was also a time that completely shaped the animation landscape where most other studios tried to be like Disney by making their own animated musicals. However, once the 2000s came along, their titles as the animation champion was almost immediately taken away from them. Much like with the animation industry, Disney wanted to step away from their usual musical format in favor of trying something new and a little more ambitious. But instead of immediately jumping into the realm of 3D, they wanted to be more experimental with their storytelling, making movies that have more comedy, more action, more world building, and trying out new styles of animation that was never done before. But that's not to say that they've never played with computer animation before. Ever since the 1980s, Disney always found ways 
ways to implement CG onto their hand-drawn films to help viewers immerse themselves even more in their works like they've never had before. And each use of CGI was more bold and even bigger than the last. But like with every experiment, there is that risk that they might fail and audiences wouldn't buy it. And that was unfortunately the case with Disney for the most part. Almost every single movie they released was a box office flop some of which lost a significant amount of money. And even with the Disney name attached to it, they easily end up getting overshadowed by the latest CG innovation at the time. The only movie they ever put out back then that became a success in the levels of their works from the 1990s was Lilo and Stitch, which would go on to become a prominent franchise of its own. But Disney was not alone in this predicament. It really was a time when computer graphics was in and hand-drawn was out. Even DreamWorks still tried to put out some 2D films of their own, but since they never reached the levels of fame as Shrek and even became major money-blowing bombs, they had to quickly abandon hand-drawn and fully commit to just making CG films. Unfortunately, it didn't take long for Disney to do the same, where in 2004, after they released a consecutive set of flops like Treasure Planet, Brother Bear, and Home on the Range, they decided to quit producing hand-drawn films and decided to close down all their studios outside of their main hub in California, including the ones in France and Orlando, Florida. However, it wasn't just Disney animation that was going through a downhill spiral at the time. The entire company was becoming a sinking ship because it was starting to be apparent that a madman was left at the wheel. The Michael Eisner years has often been considered to be a very fascinating chapter in Disney's history. As much as he was responsible for revitalizing Disney during his early years, he also caused the destruction of that newly built reputation in his later years. Yes, it is true that some issues were caused by outside sources, and he had a few wins from time to time, but they are nothing compared to the amount of problems that he was responsible for in the 2000s. Sure, Who Wants to Be a Millionaire was one of the top-rated shows on television back then, but there was no other show that was keeping ABC alive since Disney's acquisition. Yes, they put out some hits like Lilo and Stitch and Pirates of the Caribbean, but they were like the little diamonds in the rough of failures. And I know that their theme park division was suffering mainly due to the consequences of the 9-11 attack, but that doesn't explain how Disney's California Adventure began as a complete joke. And those are only a handful of examples of his executive screw-ups. It was clear that the Michael Eisner that once saved Disney was gone and now replaced with a new Michael Eisner who continuously plagued the company with one bad decision after another. It had gotten so bad that Walt's nephew, Roy E. Disney, resigned as a board member at the end of 2003 to get away from him and then lead a campaign to get rid of Eisner in order to rescue the company. But what was possibly the most damaging problem he caused for Disney was ruining the relationship with Pixar. Since they were the new animation kings, they were responsible for some of Disney's biggest hits for that time, like Monsters, Inc., Finding Nemo, and The Incredibles. In 2004, Eisner and then-Pixar CEO Steve Jobs talked about renewing their distribution deal, but with a few changes regarding control and money. However, after a heated argument, they both decided to split ways, where Pixar was looking for another new distributor, and Disney decided to open up a new studio called Circle 7 Animation that would have been in charge of making sequels to the Pixar movies that Disney released. Meanwhile, while all that was happening, Mark Dindle, who just came out of directing The Emperor's New Groove, proposed a new idea for Disney Animation's next animated feature that was a more comedic and modern twist to the classic fairy tale of Chicken Little. He did get the approval of the Disney executives to work on it, including Eisner, but the story had to go through a lot of changes during production, including the character of Chicken Little going from a girl to a boy, and changing the conflict from going to a summer camp and stopping an evil counselor, to stop stopping aliens from destroying the town. But the one big goal Eisner wanted the team to do with this movie is to make it Disney's first fully computer animated feature. Technically, some could say that 2000's Dinosaur was their first, but that doesn't actually count because one, that's not fully CG. That's just computer generated dinosaurs placed in live action backgrounds, and two, that wasn't Disney themselves who did the CG there. That was from a short-lived studio called Secret Lab. Anyways, 
Because of the animation climate noticeably changing to computer animated films, Michael wanted to make sure that the team at Disney was ready to adapt to these changes and be prepared to use the new technology from now on in order to make their pictures. Even taking half of the hand-drawn team and put them in an 18-month crash course on 3D animating. But then in 2005, after a lot of pushback from Roy, his business partner Stanley Gold, and the Disney board members, Michael ultimately decided that he would resign as the CEO. And on September 30th of that year, he left the company and gave his position to his then second in command, Robert Iger, the following day. Now with Bob in charge, he knew that his first big mission as the new CEO was to fix the errors that Eisner left. And none could be more of an emergency than to bring Pixar back to Disney. However, Iger didn't immediately knock on Pixar's door to talk to them or vice versa. As their old deal was close to expiration after the release of Cars in June of 2006, both sides wanted to keep an eye on one movie that would ultimately determine the fate of the negotiation. Chicken Little. Like I said, this is their first fully computer animated feature. Pixar used to be their main supplier of that, but now it's Disney's turn to prove that they were no longer dependent on others to stay current with the animation times. The movie's box office performance was the key player on who would have the advantage in the negotiations. If Chicken Little was a great success, then it would give Disney the upper hand to show that they could still do well without Pixar. But if it was a flop like most of their films back then, then Pixar would gain leverage because it would prove that Disney desperately needed them to make profitable computer animated films under their brand. And so the ultimate test began when the movie was released on November 4th, 2005. And the result was kind of complicated. Keep in mind that at the time, Disney and Pixar were in two completely different leagues in terms of what they define as a success. In total, Chicken Little earned $135.4 million domestically and $314.4 million worldwide. For Pixar, this would be considered a flop. Not only did the critics gave it some of the worst reviews for a Disney animated film, but it only made half as much as The Incredibles and nearly a third of Finding Nemo. For Disney, on the other hand, this was their biggest success since Dinosaur from five years prior. And not only was it their first movie since that one where it started in first place on its opening weekend with $40 million, but it almost made the same domestic amount as Lilo and Stitch. So with these two completely different perspectives, what does it mean for the deal? Who ended up with the advantage? Well, no one. If Chicken Little's modest success proved anything, it showed that while Disney couldn't make computer animated films in the levels of Pixar, that doesn't mean those movies would fail, and was a possible sign that Disney could get better from there. It ultimately put both parties on equal ground, and after a couple of months of negotiations, they finally found an agreement. On January 23rd, 2006, Disney announced that they would completely buy out Pixar in an all-stock deal worth $7.4 billion, which was made official on May 5th. While Disney got the benefit of owning an entire second animation studio, Steve Jobs also received a great deal out of it by not only still being the majority shareholder by owning 50.1% of Pixar, but he also got to be a part of Disney's board of directors with the largest stake of the Walt Disney Company at 7%. But this wasn't just an acquisition for Disney. In a way, it was kind of like an unofficial merger between its animation studios, as their first order after the buyout was to take the other heads of Pixar, John Lasseter and Ed Catmull, and make them the chief creative officer and president respectively of Pixar, Disney Animation, and Disney Toon Studios. Under their leadership, they gave the team at Disney Animation the motivational boost to make their movies bigger and better so that they could make the studio as strong as Pixar by not only improving their computer animation craft, but to tell greater stories and even encourage to continue their fairy tale traditions. The result was a new age for Disney Animation where each film became better than the last and some would go on to become the biggest animated features of all time, and even some of the best they've made, from Tangled, to Wreck-It Ralph, to Moana, to Zootopia, to Frozen. As for the Walt Disney Company itself, 
The success of the Pixar deal gave Bob Iger the motivation to have that style of business be the cornerstone of his legacy, where the company more than made up for Eisner's mistakes by shaping itself to become the entertainment giant that it is today through more acquisitions. Pixar was only the beginning. After that, Disney bought out Marvel Entertainment in 2009, Lucasfilm in 2012, and one of the biggest media deals in history, the acquisition of 21st Century Fox in 2017. And all these business deals, all of these history-making features, and all of these strategies to put Disney back at the top of the entertainment industry was all thanks to a chicken that made a decent amount of money. What I'm trying to say is that Chicken Little was the movie that initiated the domino effect that led to the rebound that the Walt Disney Company needed. The fact that the movie did just okay at the box office was the perfect result for what was possibly the most important deal in the company's history. It allowed both Disney and Pixar to see eye to eye as equals in order to make a fair deal that both could benefit. If Chicken Little did really well or very poorly, it would have made things really ugly with one getting more of a leverage than the other. And that would be something that might have guaranteed to leave one side unhappy and make the deal and their relationship cut short. And with that kind of mess, Disney wouldn't be so keen to go buy out more companies after failing to make one go well with what was the biggest animation studio in the industry. Not to mention how they wouldn't have gotten the help they needed to reboot their animation division to return it to its former glory. Overall, if there's there's one thing to learn from Chicken Little, it's that you don't have to be a great movie to make a great impact. It has already made history as the first ever digital 3D movie, but it was also the unsung hero that set the new standard for Disney to grow as the most prominent media corporation. Of course, not many would want to give it that credit since the quality is too far from the standards of Fantasia or Beauty and the Beast, but it was the right movie that came at the right time to attract just enough people to help settle the score in what was a very rocky business relationship. I may not like the movie itself, but I can't deny the role that it played to make it one of the most important animated films from Disney. And yes, even I can't believe that I am saying this about Chicken Little. Who are we talking about?